Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. Wanted to update you a little bit on New Tech Inventors, uh, where we are now, and uh, what's been going on for the past year. Uh, this company actually started or began with an idea that I had in December of 2019. And the idea was to make a product which involves several parts that would have to be made, and this is one of the parts. And um, to do that, I, I was familiar with 3D printers, but I'd never uh, printed with one or used one before. I'd never actually seen a 3D printer operate. But I went out and purchased my first 3D printer, December of 2019. I downloaded the Autodesk 123D design software and began designing this part and a number of other parts that go along with it. Then I started printing those on that first printer that I have and it was a uh, simple acrylic frame um, uh, 3D printer, low cost. I think I paid probably about $140 for it. And once I started printing the parts, I realized, you know, this is um, this is something that I could do as a business. So I started perfecting the parts. Uh, this particular part, there were probably uh, 20 different versions of it before I came up with the final finished versions where everything worked the way I wanted to, where it received the electronic components properly, where it was reinforced and strong enough. Um, so it uh, it's a process. But in doing that, I finalized uh, this particular product and in July, I received a provisional patent on, on that particular product and then shortly after that received a patent on uh, another uh, product that I was going to manufacture. And in manufacturing these, I realized one printer what would not be enough and I had purchased a couple more printers different types to uh, try to see how it would work and printed a, 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 where I could print more parts and that's where I kind of started heading in the direction of um, the term print farm to me was foreign um, I hadn't heard of the 3D print farm before but I soon realized that that's what I, where I was heading uh, for my manufacturing. So by the middle of 2020, I had two patents. I had a lot of parts designed and perfected. I had several different printers that I was able to print these parts on. I uh, also had set up my business and created a limited liability corporation called New Tech Inventors and uh, set up a, was able to get the domain name for New Tech Inventors, was able to set up my G code, my PayPal's, my, uh, all my different accounts and everything, uh, get my licenses, uh, my state and federal ID number and all of that stuff so I would be ready to go into manufacturing. Um, to date, I have not sold anything. I don't expect to have anything ready uh, for sale until probably spring or early summer of 2021. And uh, uh, since this is January of 2021 now, that's not very far off. But um, I do have um, another location, I have another building here where I live that uh, where I'm in the process of setting up auxiliary uh, print farm there using primarily these 
Tronics CXY2 Pros and the ANET uh, ET4X uh, printers there and running a larger quantity of those, probably about 25 to 30 printers and running them on 12 hour cycles um, and by that I mean either 12 hours or 24, 36 or 48. This is a 48 hour print cycle here for this printer. Uh, these parts take six hours each to print and I can run eight of them on this printer. So once I start it, it's pretty much printing for uh, continuous 48 hours. So um, uh, that's about where we're at now. I've gotten to the point to where I've perfected a lot of parts. I'm coming up with new parts all the time and other things that I'll be uh, looking forward to selling here in the near future. Uh, the next thing we'll be doing is setting up our uh, website where we can sell products from the website and that will need to be done um, as soon as possible so we'll have it all tested out and ready to go by the time we're ready to start marketing these products and we've built up enough inventory and also I want to make sure we have prototypes and uh, some of the finished products that are going out to uh, special people to test them for us and evaluate them and look for any problems so we can, uh, if there are any that we've missed, that we can get those corrected before we start selling to the public. So that's a little bit about, uh, about where I'm at. Again, it's me alone, so anyone out there that's uh, ever thought about starting a business or something, um, coronavirus uh, doesn't affect this because I order all of my parts and materials and printers and everything um, on the internet. They're delivered to the house. I work out of the house and I work at my own pace. So, um, and being one person, it's, it's a little difficult doing everything, even these YouTube videos. It's taking a while to uh, learn how to use some of the editing software to be able to edit these videos and try to get them in uh, a good format where it's uh, easier to watch. It's also a little hard sometimes to discipline myself to try to get good content and condense that content so that I'm actually giving the viewer something of value and um, giving it to them in the shortest, most efficient uh, use of the time. So those are the things I'm learning as I go along. Uh, if you are interested in what I'm doing, if you think you might want to do the same thing at some point, watch some of the videos and subscribe and watch and I'll explain and uh, discuss some of the problems that I've had, how I've overcome them. Uh, I'll talk about things that have worked well for me that might work for you. Uh, a lot of people are taking advantage of this technology. Um, for me, the technology is, um, is incredible. Um, don't want to bore you a whole lot, but I started out in electronics in uh, 19... 59. Um, I became a ham radio operator at that time. Everything was vacuum tubes. And um, after high school, uh, I went into the Air Force and was in, um, uh, had electronics there. I was in air traffic control, radar systems, uh, actually ground controlled approach radar systems and I um, spent four years there. Uh, my last year was actually at Nha Trang Air Base in Vietnam and I was part of the Vietnamization program training the Vietnamese um, Air Force uh, officers the ins and outs and how to operate the, the radar systems there. So, um, but again, most of that equipment was still tube vacuum tube type equipment from the early 50s. Thanks to Sputnik and 
um, the, the space race between the United States and USSR um, technology blossomed with the uh, development of transistors and uh, the silicon chip technology. Uh, this was um, this was a big thing, and back at that time, I was amazed at uh, how much you could condense the electronics and they had to do this to get into space. And later on in the mid to late 70s I became interested in computers because microprocessor technology had come on the market. I actually started a computer company um, that used these microprocessor based computers and we sold those and programmed them for a number of businesses. When they started out, um, the first computers I was selling and using in businesses uh, was had 48K of memory. And out of that 48K, by the time you loaded the operating system, it took up 24K, which left only 24K left for the basic program you were writing. So you had to write some pretty efficient code to um, get these computers to do things and we were doing a lot of things with them in businesses. We were uh, doing payroll systems, um, uh, personnel managing uh, production and inventory and so forth. So uh, that's come a long way because those 48K memory boards were about this size. And now I can pull out a little uh, micro SD card over here that has two terabytes on it. So th that's just an example of how far we've come. And I think the 3D printers are part of that technology. Um, there, it's a whole new uh, thing. And I would encourage anyone out there that has ideas to go ahead and get a 3D printer. They're inexpensive. I paid 256 actually 249 uh, for these if you buy four at a time. And uh, $240, I'm sorry, $149 a piece. So $149 a piece if you buy four, I think if you buy one it's uh, like 156 um, but for $156, you can't beat it. It has um, a self-leveling feature. It has a um, um, filament brake sensor. It has resume print and power failures. It has the large 255 by 255 platform, a large color touch screen, um, and it's well built. 24 volt power supply, 360 watts, which allows your uh, print head and your uh, base to heat very quickly. So the bed and uh, nozzle temperatures are also uh, well maintained during the print job with that additional power. So those are few things I just wanted to chat and get a little bit of this on video while I'm set up here and uh, I'll try to edit this in any part of it where I think the content might be useful I'll try to get it out there and get it posted to get this information to you so until the next time thank you again for watching